Uh, first thing I would like to do is explain why I'm here. <laughs> I'm, I'm Peter MacDougall and I had the tremendous privilege of serving as the president of Santa Barbara City College from 1981 uh, to 2002, uh, a 21 year period. And what I want to say about that is the sense of, a sense of gratitude that, I've, that I have uh, for the experience of working here at SBCC and getting to know wonderful people from the Board of Trustees to the faculty, the classified staff, uh, fellow administrators, uh, the wonderful people who dedicated themselves to the foundation of SBCC. Uh, I look upon these 21 years as uh, just a, a tremendous privilege to be able to engage with such talented people uh, in doing what we are doing, which is to educate individuals so that they, the potential that they have to live their lives might be fulfilled. Uh, so uh, I, 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 that sense of gratitude is something I feel the need uh, to share with you. Uh, second, I do want to acknowledge uh, the Board of Trustees. Uh, first, the Board of Trustees that, that hired me. Uh, I, hope, I hope they feel they made a good decision. <laughs> I, think, I think they did. And uh, I, I had the privilege, which is very unusual, of working with four of the seven board members involved with the hiring of me for the 21-year period that I served as president. Uh, Kay Alexander, Joe Dobbs, uh, Eli Luria, and uh, Joyce Powell, uh, the four board members with whom uh, I, I was privileged to serve during my entire tenure. And during that time, we had other members of the board who were uh, very, very important to the college that served. Uh, Joan Livingston, uh, Desmond O'Neill, Leonard Jarrett and Luis Vieger and Ed Santa Domingo, I think, were the other five trustees uh, who served during the period of time that they were, I was there uh, for different, different lengths, of course. But uh, it's, it's unique for many community colleges in California to have the stability of trustees that Santa Barbara City College has enjoyed, and also uh, the harmony, if you will, and effectiveness uh, that the board exhibited. So I, I, I want to thank them very much because uh, the board is very critical uh, to supporting and, and uh, enabling a college president to be effective, and I could not have asked for more, more support uh, than I received. I, I also want to uh, mention the, the gratitude that I feel uh, for working with a faculty uh, at this college that I think, frankly, is unsurpassed in any community college. Now, I know that's a, a big statement to make, and I know uh, it's one that I, I don't necessarily, I don't have the experience to make from the standpoint of having had uh, collective experience at all the community colleges in California. But I think I know enough about the other community colleges and know enough about this faculty uh, to say if there's a better one, uh, I'm not aware of it. This is just an outstanding group who they care deeply uh, about students. Uh, they work uh, cooperatively uh, with one another. And you know, they work even uh, fairly cooperatively with the superintendent president, <laughs> except when it comes time for collective bargaining. But I don't want to go into that because th that's a nice thing to have uh, out of my life at this point. But uh, I do want to acknowledge uh, the faculty of this institution. I've, I've developed not only professional relationships, but personal relationships with many about them. I feel deep affection for them. And it's an affection that grows from respecting uh, their commitments, uh, their capabilities, and the dedication uh, that they've shown. And 
Obviously, uh, I also want to mention the, the classified staff of Santa Barbara City College. I mean, institutions could not run uh, if we didn't have a classified staff where there, were, there was not only uh, an understanding and a skill and capability for individuals to carry out their individual jobs, but where they were prepared to work with others. Their, 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 their job was seen as something, what do we have to do to be effective? And they would work collectively and collaboratively. Personally, I was tremendously benefited by Elma Ledbetter, for example, as a classified staff member who was my uh, personal assistant. Angie Esqueda, who, who uh, replaced Elma when Elma retired. And they, they, they're examples of a, a, a collective of classified staff uh, that just make the college hum and, and give it its effectiveness. And they're, they're the first line people that students meet, that students come into contact with. And uh, I always felt strongly about that. In fact, uh, throughout the time period that I was here, I made it a point uh, to meet with every classified staff person who was hired. I wouldn't necessarily be, excuse me, meet individually, uh, but I would meet maybe on a monthly basis with the, with the new hires who have c come in. And I would share with them my perception, which was very honest, uh, honestly delivered, that they make a difference in the institution. Uh, the, the person who's doing the maintenance of the, of the classrooms, the person who's heading the grounds, the individual who is uh, you know, assessing students and doing other things of that type, uh, they have a tremendous impact. And they have to realize how important they are to the success of the institution. And that's something I always want, I wanted to convey to them personally because I felt it uh, deeply and I wanted them to know uh, how I felt about it. And then of course you have the administrators of the institutions and, and uh, I have to say, uh, during my, my tenure at the institution, we just had outstanding administrators as well. Uh, they worked tremendously hard. Uh, they, knew, they knew their job. Uh, they had talents. They were always willing to go beyond uh, that job. And uh, I have a tre tremendous uh, appreciation for how hard uh, people worked. Uh, just to step back a bit in time, uh, when I came in, uh, Pat Huglin was the Dean of Instruction for Santa Barbara City College, and Pat spent almost his entire career at the institution. He came up from uh, Assistant Dean and, and was Dean of Instruction. And uh, Linda Fairley was appointed the Vice President for Student Services. The position was, was open when I came. And I appointed Linda to that position. She did an excellent job and later went on to become the vice president for the continuing education program before she retired. And uh, Dan Oros was the vice president for human resources, very capable, uh, dedicated person who developed a first class uh, human resources area. And uh, Charles Hansen was director of business services and uh, Charles was here at a very critical time uh, in terms of the institution because we, there was a lot of growth involved uh, during the time that I was at SBCC. And uh, Charles's area uh, had the primary responsibility for coordinating all the construction projects. And it seemed as though we always had two or three under, uh, under supervision and uh, it was that busy a time period. So my, my point is uh, to, to make an institution an exceptional institution, you have to have talented people in all categories. Obviously your faculty has to be exceptional in their disciplines and in their dedication to students. Your classified staff have to know their individual jobs but they have to be willing to support their peers in ensuring that collectively their department 
delivers. And then the administrators, they must be the type of people uh, that understand how important it is to lead on projects, but to lead in a collective way. All understand that their commitment is to a level of excellence in the jobs that they do and a level of collaboration in serving one another and serving students. The institution has never been satisfied with the status quo. Innovation and looking ahead to how we can become better are values that I feel are deeply embedded in SBCC. First community college uh, in the country to have a study abroad program in China, and I'm quite positive the first community college in the country to have a a study abroad program in what was then uh, the Soviet Union. Our reputation uh, was determined by how well our students did and, and uh, we looked at how we could become more successful in that. And the elements that later formed the matriculation program for the entire community college system uh, to a great extent were put in place at Santa Barbara City College. What you do is you take a broad concept. I mean, who's going to be opposed to student success? No one. But how do you get there? It has achieved its excellence because of its willingness to be critical of its practices, to look at how uh, we can become a better institution. And that's not always the easiest thing to do in an institution. You know, everybody likes to think, well, we're doing a great job and, and that. But that's not the case. We have, you know, we can do better. And we have too many students who might not be making it. What do we have to do for that to change? And so one thing I'm very pleased with that uh, throughout my tenure, uh, the excellence of leadership that came from faculty uh, and staff on the issue of uh, student success. The center and the most important leadership responsibility was for the college itself. Uh, working with the administrative team, working with the faculty senate, working with faculty leadership and classified staff, and ensuring that the college is, is doing the job. I became very much involved uh, in the community, whether it was through Cottage Hospital or uh, you know, the, the, the school systems and collaborating with the superintendents, but, but connecting to the community as broadly and as deeply uh, as I could. And I did chair the Accreditation Commission. I was on the commission for nine years and uh, chaired it for three, as well as serving in a leadership capacity uh, for the groups in Sacramento as well. The last area I'd like to just uh, mention briefly, and I can't tell you uh, how strongly I feel about this area as well. Uh, it's been a uh, tremendous benefit uh, to Santa Barbara City College, and that's the foundation uh, for SBCC. Uh, we, we have been so fortunate uh, to have individuals who have come to the institution from the community taking on leadership roles as president uh, of, the, uh, of the foundation. Eli Loria was president of the foundation. Paul Ridley Tree, uh, Joe Shear, who unfortunately uh, just died recently, and uh, Helen Padotti, an absolute, uh, absolutely wonderful woman, uh, a key person in the history of Santa Barbara. Uh, they were all presidents of uh, the foundation for SBCC. Uh, when I came, uh, the foundation had uh, a charter. It had no paid staff except for a part-time secretary working in a, 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 a few hours a week. And that changed dramatically. We were very, very fortunate uh, to uh, hire our first uh, full-time executive director, uh, who was Jim Minow. Uh, Jim, Jim was preceded, however, uh, by Lana Rose, who was a staff member at the college, later became uh, a major faculty leader as president of the Academic Senate. But Lana uh, went from a, a lab teaching position in uh, the Biological Sciences Department and became a half-time uh, chair for the foundation for SBCC and did a very fine job of be beginning to structure uh, the, the, the college's capability of carrying on. 
And then I'm not sure when it was, it might have been 83 or 84, uh, we hired our first full-time executive director. That was Jim Minow, who had been on the development staff at UCSB. Uh, Jim began assembling a team and strengthening the board and uh, really did a great job. And then subsequently, uh, Holland Swift and then Pat Snyder uh, became the director and she just did an outstanding job. But we have been blessed at the institution to have people uh, who care about the college and are willing to put uh, very substantial donations behind supporting the college's mission. So uh, I, I view, uh, I view S SBCC's foundation as being able to provide what I refer to as the margin of excellence for the college. The state of California gives you enough to survive but not enough to flourish. And you have to have an effective fundraising because sometimes $10,000 here, $20,000 there can make a difference in a faculty member being able to do something they otherwise could not do. So I'm very proud of, of, the, of the foundation and I think it's made a big difference in supporting the college becoming the great institution that it is.